Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy and welcome to our first video in a new series we're doing. It's kind of a micro training series. If you all remember a few weeks ago, I posted a video uh, about a uh, recreation, a prototype that I, I did uh, where I took the game Robo Recall and I sort of backwards engineered some of the interactions and showed how you can use Shapes XR to prototype out a VR game. Uh, so in this series, what I'm going to do in this particular video, I'm going to walk you through some of the creation that I, that I did for that just to show you how you can use Shapes XR to do the same thing for your applications. Uh, so uh, we're going to look at that Robo Recall prototype. So let me go ahead and show you how the interaction is supposed to work. So in the game, um, players land on this platform here. And then the main menu appears, some graphics come up that are just part of the gameplay. And then the main menu pops up. And you can see here, we've got this hand to indicate how users interact with the menu. They can point to the menu. Uh, when a button is activated or when it's highlighted, uh, it uh, shows up white and shrinks. Same with missions, we push the button and the missions menu brings up this cityscape. So we've prototyped this out in Shapes XR. Let me show you now how I built some of that out. Uh, to begin with, I'm gonna show you how I did some of these buildings here, and then we're gonna focus specifically on interactions. All right, I've got a blank stage here where we're gonna start building out our cityscape. So to do that, I'm gonna access my Shapes button, and I'm gonna come down here to my Shapes. And I'm gonna choose this cube here. I'm gonna use my Grip button and I'm gonna grab that shape, bring it into the environment. And I wanna make sure that this cube is aligned with my world. So I'm gonna hit my magnet button here to turn on my world grid. Now you can see I've got some dots floating out in the air and I can snap my object to these dots. You'll also see when I'm in this mode, when I rotate my object, Shapes XR forces it into a 45 degree or a 90 degree angle. This just helps you keep things aligned to the world grid. So I'm gonna snap it to a point. It's always good when you're creating something to snap the center of your object to a point just to keep things aligned. Now let's use our gizmo tool here. I'm gonna turn my gizmo on. I'm gonna choose classic and we're gonna use the gizmo to edit this shape. To activate the gizmo, I just touch the object and I hit this check mark button on my controller. And I can grab these different handles and move my object along an axis and rotate it and so on and so forth. In this case, I'm gonna grab this cube underneath the arrow and stretch out my cube a little bit to make the base of my building. All right, I wanna duplicate this now to add a top section to the building. So to duplicate, I'm going to grab this arrow here, move along the axis, and I'm going to hit my duplicate button while I'm still holding it. Now I have two objects. And then on my scale gizmo, you'll see I've got this light blue cube here. When I grab that, that allows me to scale my object uh, equidistance from the center point. So I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna move that down into position. And um, I'm going to change the scale just a little bit more. And in this case, I'm going to use the scale gizmo Grab the top here and bring that down. Maybe make that just a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna repeat that process for the top tier. All right, we're starting to build a skyscraper. Let's add some decorations to the top. I'm gonna to go back to my menu here. I'm gonna uh, do this, uh, select this half, uh, this half sphere here. And this is where aligning my uh, building with a center dot is really important. So I can grab my object here, this sphere, and I can make sure it's snapped to a center point directly above it. So that way I can make sure everything's aligned properly. So I'm gonna select this here, move that down into position, and then I'm gonna grab a triangle shape here, snap that also above, right there, and then, give my building a little bit of a tower. Now you can see in the prototype, the buildings have a transparency to them. So let's do the same with our building. So I'm gonna go back to the building that we were creating and to recolor it, I'm going to access my shapes button, come down here to my color tool. I'm gonna to select this light blue color additive and I'm gonna bring my alpha channel down a little bit. That color is now loaded into my handset. When I hold down on the trigger button, anything that I touch turns that color. So we're just gonna come in here and recolor our building. And uh, we just do that over and over again for all the buildings that we want to be that color. Now I've built out my cityscape here. Now in the game, this uh, cityscape is at a bit more of an angle. So I created it this way just to keep everything aligned to the world grid. But now that I have it all created, I can rotate it into the position that I want. 
So to do that, I'm going to use my selection tool. To access the selection tool, you first of all wanna make sure that you're in gizmo mode. And you'll notice here on top of my thumbstick, we've got some icons and if I toggle back and forth with my thumbstick, these are all the different selection tools. I'm gonna to choose this sphere. So with this sphere and using my trigger button, anything that intersects with that sphere gets selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and select all my cityscape. My classic gizmo's on, so I'm gonna grab this rotation handle here and you can see I can rotate everything and we'll rotate it to about right there. Perfect, looking good. So let's prototype out now what happens when users select missions. So in this prototype, I've got this hand here to suggest where and how users interact with the menu. They select missions, uh, the button decreases a little bit, highlights white, and then the cityscape menu pops up and you'll notice when it does, it sort of scales into position. Uh, so let's prototype that out. So let's go ahead and start with a clean menu here. Now, before we do this, let me explain how the prototyping system works. We use a system called stages. Stages are kind of like PowerPoint slides. Uh, a stage is everything you see in this room and we can add multiple stages to a project and we can toggle back and forth between them to show how something progresses over time. So to activate the stages menu, I'm gonna push up on my thumbstick and you can see here now we are on stage one. I've already got some stages added here, but I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So we're gonna start on stage one. This is the basic first stage of our interaction. And so the next stage should show, stage two should show what happens once this button is highlighted or we hover over it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to stage two. You can see we got a blank stage here. First thing I need to do is I need to get this menu over to stage two. So to do that, I'm gonna start on stage one, highlight the menu, pick it up, and you'll notice I've got this floating white ring right here in the air. If I align my controller with that ring, the object that I'm holding snaps back into its original position. So I highlight the object and I can snap it back to its original position. So while I'm snapping it to its original position, I'm gonna hit the duplicate button on my controller. Now I'm still holding the object. So you can see I've duplicated and I'm still holding. And now while I'm holding the menu, I'm gonna to toggle over to stage two and snap it back to that position and release. So now when I toggle between stage one and two, you can see my menu is in exactly the same position on both stages. Now on stage two, let's change what this menu looks like, this menu button. So I'm gonna change the color. I'm gonna come down here to my color. I'm gonna choose white. Recolor that, and then I'm going to change my text to black. All right, so I did that on stage two. So now when I toggle through the stages, you can see that the button's been highlighted. All right, for the next interaction, I want this button to shrink in size just a little bit when it's highlighted. So I'm going to duplicate stage two by hitting this duplicate button there. So now stage three is a duplicate of stage two. On stage two, I'm gonna come in again with my selection tool. So go to gizmo, and in this case, instead of using the sphere, I'm gonna to toggle over to this little worm. And you can see when I hold down on my trigger button, I draw this line in the air. Anything that line intersects gets selected. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna select all these options here. And again, I'm on stage three right now, and I'm gonna shrink that down just a little bit. There we go. All right, so now when we toggle between our stages, starting with stage one, we go to stage two, it's highlighted, stage three, it shrinks. Perfect, that's exactly what I want. All right, now I have to show how users actually interact with these buttons. So let's go back to our first stage here. I'm gonna come to my shapes. I'm gonna choose uh, this shapes icon here, come down to the table icon. These are just props that you can bring into your environment. So using my thumbstick, I can scroll down and I'm gonna choose um, this hand here. All right, so that's gonna be the hand. Uh, in Robo Recall, you don't see your controllers like you see in Shapes XR. you actually see a physical hand. So that's what we're gonna use for our prototype. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my world grid on just to kind of get this aligned here. And then let's create a laser pointer. And then I'm gonna group these together. So to do that, I'm gonna select both using my little squiggly worm tool here. Once both things are selected, I'm gonna to touch the object and then you'll see I've got this button here that looks like a box on top of the box. That is a grouping button. 
I hit that and now these two objects are grouped together. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my world grid off so this can free flow. All right, so for this first interaction, nothing's highlighted. So I'm just gonna have my hand sort of down here to the side so it's not pointing at anything. And then just like we did with the menu, we're on stage one right now. I'm gonna pick it up, snap it to its original position and duplicate, toggle over to stage two and snap that right back there. So now this hand is in exactly the same position on stage one and two, but on stage two, I wanna move it up to show that it's pointing at the menu. All right, so we got that. So now when we toggle between the two stages, we can sort of suggest an animation. Now this beam isn't quite long enough, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch my group, and if I hit that top button, it will ungroup the two objects, but in this case, I'm gonna hit this bottom button. That keeps everything grouped together, but I can edit the objects. And I'm gonna come over here and edit our laser pointer. So I'm gonna select that, and I've got my scale gizmo selected right now. So I'm gonna grab that, and I'm gonna move that all the way so that it's touching the menu. And then just to add a little bit more production design, I'm gonna go back to my shapes. I'm gonna choose a sphere here, and I'm gonna color this a yellow additive. I'm just gonna eyeball this, make this kind of small here, and I'm gonna put that right there, just to suggest that the laser pointer is actually touching the menu. And for our next stage, stage three, I want my hand from stage two to be in the same position for stage three. So I'm gonna come in here, select my group, and select my little sphere there. I'm gonna pick up my object, snap and duplicate, move to stage three, put back in position. All right, so now we've got our interaction. We've got stage one. In fact, for stage one, I am gonna ungroup this. We actually don't need the laser printer pointer to be showing yet. So that's gonna be stage one, stage two, and stage three. So we can sort of show that interaction. So once the missions button is pushed, the city scales into position. So let's go ahead and prototype that out. Let's go back to what we were building. We got stage one here, two, three, and then I'm gonna go over here to stage five. That's where I built out my cityscape. And I'm just going to toggle this over. I'm gonna move this one stage over. So now it's coming directly after stage three. So we hit the button. On stage three, we hit missions button and then the cityscape appears. But we want this to scale into position. So I'm gonna duplicate stage four by hitting that button. Now stage four and five are exactly the same. So on stage four, I want the cityscape to be a little smaller. So I'm gonna select my cityscape and then I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And then let's align it back with the floor. So now when I toggle between stage four and five, you can see the city grows into its position. Now going back to the final prototype, you can see that the menu also begins to move up. So we need to prototype that out as well. So let's go back to stage four here. So this is where the menu needs to be, but it needs to be moving up. So I'm gonna go to stage three and I'm going to just select all of this for now. And then I'm going to do my snap into position, duplicate, move over to stage four, put this into position. And then in this case, I can get rid of my laser pointer. And then I'm going to select everything here. And move that up a little bit. So now when I toggle between stage three and four, we're suggesting some animation. And then on stage five, our cityscape is in its final position and then the menu should rise all the way to the top. Now in the final prototype, you can see here, let me go, our menu looks a little different. So instead of building all that out right now, um, I'm just going to use this menu here and bring that over into the prototype that we're creating. All right, so when we move through our stages, we can suggest our interactions. And then last but not least, I'm gonna create sort of a light beam that comes out of this sort of laser pointer at the very top. 
So let's go, actually, let's go ahead and start with uh, stage five here, the final position. And to do this, I am going to use my draw tool and I'm gonna use this volumizing tool here. And then I'm gonna choose white and I'm gonna go ahead and stick with PBR and bring my alpha channel down all the way here. And then make sure, again, I'm on my draw tool. And then I'm just going to draw this out. Kind of suggest a light beam. And I think I'm gonna come back to my color and bring that alpha channel way down. There, that looks good. So now we've got this light beam on stage five. And I want the light beam to be on stage four too. So I'm gonna grab the light beam that I just created, snap, duplicate, go to stage four, put it in position. And then I'm going to use my gizmo to sort of shrink it down just a little bit. Again, we're just prototyping, so we're not worrying about being too exact. All right, so let's go back to stage one and see our interactions. So we have stage one here, user's hand is in position. We toggle to stage two to activate the laser beam and highlight the button. The button shrinks just to show more interaction. The user presses the button and our cityscape comes into position and scales up to size. All right, folks, so that's how the stages system works in Shapes XR. Hopefully you can take some of these techniques and you can start using them as you start prototyping out your own XR experiences. Thanks so much for joining. We hope to see you in the next training series.